now we will uh, start with the new features of the version 2022.04. I will just shut down my webcam during the webinar and I will um, yeah and I will show the software now. First, because interoperability between your software solution is essential, we have added a new import interface for you to quickly load leapfrog machines. All the variables defined in the leapfrog mesh are imported. This new import, as well as the existing CAD import, allow you to select several meshes at once to speed up the import. Additionally, you can check the open close status of each object contained in a mesh file and have visual feedback of problematic edges before using it in other tasks. Another new feature that can make your life easier is the exchange of color scales between Isatis Neo projects. When you create a color scale, Isatis Neo lets you export it as a file and import it in another of your projects, so you don't have to define it again. It's saving time. We have also added new tools to better tailor the estimation workflow you are setting up to your data. All the graphing bones are editable, so you can manually enter values to perfectly meet your needs. It makes the comparison between graphics easier. In the EDA base map, you can now select points by drawing a polygon highlighting and masking them. It enables fine selectivity for the analysis process. To help you in the rotation definition, an interactive rotation widget coming straight from Isatis, you ask for it, has been implemented. It is very visual. Also. The declustering window can be rotated to better match your sampling pattern. It is now possible to create and digit polylines in the 2D map and to snap the points to existing objects for a better precision. Just create the polyline and edit it in the map. The polyline can then be used as faults in the Krieging, for example. Datasets are getting bigger and bigger. Computers are struggling to adapt. The software performances are key. Dealing with big datasets is easy. Isatis Neo offers a compression tool to reduce the disk size of the file or variable directly in your project. The disk size gain can be huge. The software will automatically uncompress them if needed. And now I will pass you to our senior geostatistician, David Berry. He will show you through a demo of key new features and improvements in the Krieging process, among them the variogram model fitting with constraints and the validation of your simulations. Thanks, Ma. So here we are, Zardis Neo 2022.04. Uh, I've imported some data. This is just the uh, CarriageAss data set from Vale, which comes with a software. Fairly gentle, uh, statistically speaking. Uh, makes the modeling easy and uh, useful to illustrate some of the new features in the software. Now this data is not yet composited, so I will start in data management compositing. And we'll see the new feature here. The key one is uh, on the first page, the input selection. In previous versions of the software, this selection had to be on the top, so the collars. So either the entire uh, drill hole would be uh, composited or the drill hole would not be composited at all. What a lot of people wanted was to select particular samples on the assay table. And now we have that possibility. So when in this drop down, we can uh, see selection variables from uh, the different tables. Let's get rid of some of the variables that we don't want to composite. And now I will composite these five variables only within the ritual domain. Uh, 
the second page uh, one small thing uh, we can now composite by bench uh, this was previously in the software but it only worked if you had vertical drill holes it now works even for non-vertical drill holes the other change uh, I'll just change the compositing length with the residuals mode so here we're talking about uh, in compositing you're taking variable sample lengths down the drill holes and turning them into regular spaced intervals but you have a little bit at the end which doesn't fit so neatly into the in this case 15 meter composites um, previously we had uh, we, we could merge or we could spread it uh, we've got a couple more options now keep residuals and remove residuals and we have a little tooltip uh, of a nice little diagram to explain the differences um, if the keep residuals mode you have the residual kept remove it it's gone merge it'll make the last uh, sample a little bit longer and spread will uh, take all of the samples through the drill hole and uh, like re, uh, or cha re recalculate how long they should be so that they're all all the same length you have these advanced options if you want to uh, get more granular in terms of the details you want on those residuals you can uh, set that behavior according to the different options here depending on the length of that last residual so this one I'll just use merge with the previous one was nice and simple uh, but some users were requesting more complicated options there and uh, now we have them present so let's call this comps it's 15 meters ritual and just to show that this is working um, I'll on the assay table I will show the uh, lithology domains that I had, rich ore in red and poor ore in blue if I have a look at what just got composited uh, we can see that the solid blue areas of the poor ore, there's no iron grades there it's only been composited on the rich ore which is what I wanted with a selection on the assay table so now we have a domain uh, and composited data so we can go to EDA and let's start with just a variogram and maybe some probability plots let's make an NP plot uh, this is one of the log probability plots that we have and uh, just to illustrate we have these uh, polygon selection mode so you can select samples via polygon makes it a little bit easier uh, to uh, manipulate individual data points and remove them from calculations and once you have them shown you can mask them and remove them from the calculation or uh, unmask all points as needed uh, but the biggest changes are in the variogram itself uh, now it looks like uh, previously I had the pairwise relative variogram shown here let's pretend that we started with the default settings and uh, start with the variogram model fitting okay what have we got here this is an automatic fit at the moment I've turned on the normalization so the sum of the sills is equal to the variance so the total sill is at the dash line representing the variance now what our software has always done is write the sills of the variogram model on a scale of the variance so the variance here is about 11 and we've got a nubbit of 3.3 and a spherical sill of 7.5 you add them up and you get like 10.8 uh, what a lot of people have wanted um, is to have these on a standard 0 to 1 scale and now we can do that variance scaling uh, now we have a nugget of 0.3 and a spherical sill of 0.7 adding up to 1 uh, so this should make it easier to uh, standardize your procedures uh, it also helps a little bit of interoperability a lot of other software packages uh, use these um, 0 to 1 scales by default so it'll make it easier to transfer a variogram model from uh, either to or from Zardus Neo so Variant scaling, I assume, will be very widely used and quite popular. We can choose to fit from different curves. So by default, it'll be the variogram. Uh, we previously also offered the covariance, uh, but we now have 
options to fit from the Corellogram, pairwise relative, these various other uh, options. The way it will work is if it's something like the pairwise relative where we don't have a theoretical sill value, it'll do an approximate statistical calculation by random sampling of what it thinks the sill should be and scale everything accordingly. So um, you can change the pairwise relative and in this case there's much of a muchness in this particular data set. Uh, some other variables might show uh, greater differences. Sometimes a pairwise relative is much more stable uh, if you've got lots of high outliers. So, and I'm showing the automatic fitting here, but it also works interactively. So the model is being drawn on the pairwise relative here, and you can let's lock the sill, and we can change the range back and forth. Uh, that's all possible. So. Now as, as I enter the interactive mode, the fitting window changed to manual, you can type the ranges as before, um, the basic setting, oh, the basic parameters in the manual setting exactly the same as previous, just that we have the variant scaling option. Um, big changes are in the auto fit, uh, we have a lot more options now. Uh, so. Let me turn this one off. Um, so we have, I'm saying this is constrained automatic fitting. And where we have these lock icons unlocked, that means the computer can do what it likes. It will optimize according to its uh, optimization routines. Um, but we are able to set them. Let's say I, I want the nugget to be exactly 0 0.3, uh, it will fit the rest of the curve accordingly. And I'm still fitting from pairwise relative, so let's go back to the variogram. Um, alternatively, I could say, well, I want it to be between uh, 0.2, I actually probably have to unlock it. So let's say at least 0.2, or maybe it's between 0.2 and 0.3, I can enter these um, minimum and maximum values and have it optimized within that range. Optimize freely, it goes a little bit above 0.3. Um, you can put minimum maximum values on uh, on all of these. Uh, if I make it normalized, structure one, let's add a structure, let's make a second spherical component looks like it's not really being used, it thinks that uh, one spherical structure is sufficient. Um, I will say there are a lot of options here and some of them are not actually compatible with each other. Uh, if you have normalization on for instance you can't do too much with the sills. It's always possible to uh, to come up with contradictions like maybe you lock the nugget to be too high and you could even set it to be above the variance and therefore you can't um, have a, uh, a spherical sill that takes it that, that it goes negative so it would be a contradiction so um, there are a lot of options or a lot of apparent options in this window and if you take some time to get used to it I'm, I'm sure that it will uh, improve the automatic fitting um, but uh, it's perhaps not as many as it might appear because some combinations are not actually possible. So here I've got um, a couple of uh, spheric, I can change some of the parameters and now I've got two spherical structures fitted. And let's say I don't like these uh, really long ranges, I think it should be no more than 1000 meters. I can go like no more than 1000 there. The computer really insists on uh, having the, uh, the long range structure. Um, so I change the other one as well. Maybe I set this one to less than a thousand as well. This one, short range can be less than a hundred. And as you can see, I'm able to set these upper bounds, or I could set lower bounds, and uh, just get uh, get a more fine grain control over what the automatic fitting is doing. Um, and you can always go into the. Oops, let's unlock the sills. 
go into the interactive mode and uh, make some edits afterwards. So that's I think I've covered it. Yeah, the variant scaling, the constrained auto fit, and we can choose to fit from any curve. So those are the three big changes. There's also a little bit of a feedback here, feedback on the goodness of fit. This is uh, just a number is hard to interpret on its own. It's more used for if you uh, change the uh, change the model parameters for a given curve. The l a lower goodness of fit is better in the sense that it will be uh, a closer fit to the experimental curve according to the uh, statistical parameters uh, defined by the software. Now, one of the later features, new features, is simulation validation. So I will very quickly make some Gaussian variograms. And save this. So I have a little geoset now with raw and Gaussian variograms. Let's go simulations and quickly make some simulations. I, I won't do a very complicated calculation here, I'll do it on a very sparse grid. Uh, no real effort in the um, in the setting of the parameters just to get something ready to go. One small change that will be visible in the simulations window and also in quick interpolation is that uh, we can now display the neighborhood ellipsoid. Let's put that in the 3D scene and you can get a little visualization of the neighborhood. Move it around. And this is this will appear anywhere uh, where there's not like in Krieging the neighborhood shows you a preview of the neighborhood anyway. Uh, but in quick interpolation, simulations and other places we now have the ability to visualize the neighborhood. So don't really need many of these. Let's just make 15 to make it go fast. Alright, that can be a set of simulations and uh, now let's look at simulation validation. So the idea here is that we have uh, simulations, so input data table is my grid and I choose my macro variable. Uh, it will know from when this simulation variable is created what variogram model was used for it. So it will load that automatically. It will compute some variograms, it takes a little bit of time because there's a lot of variograms to compute, and uh, it will show the variograms comparing uh, the simulated values to the uh, uh, here it's the raw variogram and uh, you can see I put very little effort into my variogram fitting and the results are uh, pretty mediocre um, but this is the point point of having simulation validation is it allows you to check uh, do the simulations actually reproduce the input variogram model that you asked it to uh, to simulate. And uh, so if this is a real project, I would go back to where I began and uh, put a little bit more effort into my variogram fitting. We also have histograms. Can change the um, lower bound. So it'll draw the individual curves. There's a couple of different representations of it. We can have a little shaded region, uh, which might be a little bit clearer can show the mean uh, mean curve. For the histograms it'll be drawn as a curve and you've got a choice of raw or cumulative. Um, there's not a lot of variability in this particular data set or this particular set of simulations so uh, not much to see there. You can see there's a little bit of a range. Um, so checking the histograms, checking the variograms in future releases will add to these um, we'll have swath plots in, in the August release. For now we've got you know, histograms and variograms are the two most important things to check. 
uh, and we're now able to do that. Also got tables of your statistics so you can visually have a look at the uh, at the different results. Um, I should mention in the neighborhoods I've got a few extra options um, mostly for use in uh, setting how many samples can be used in each drill hole. Um, we can have a maximum number of um, drill holes that can be used now and a uh, minimum and yeah, maximum and minimum number of drill holes optimum and maximum number of samples per drill hole the word used in this window is always category rather than drill hole because you might have other categories but almost always your um, categorical variable would be the drill hole so this gives it a little bit more fine-grained control over the uh, neighborhood choices well, uh, one last major thing and I'll see if I can do this one on the fly once again not putting much effort into my variograms uh, let's go manganese and silica let's do a quick auto fit let's go normalization all right so that's just a simple omnidirectional no real effort in the uh, calculation of all the, all the, um, the modeling and I'll do some block Krieging so this is just ordinary co-Krieging two variables should be fine and let's run when I look at the messages I see that I've got some negative uh, estimated grades here and this is always possible in Krieging one variable or two variables um, but what happens with ordinary co-Krieging is that the sum of the weights for the variable being estimated so let's say uh, it's uh, we're working with silica uh, the sum of the weights for the silica samples in the neighborhood will have to be one and the sum of the weights for the manganese variables in the neighborhood uh, have to be equal to zero and because the sum of the weights for the secondary variable are equal to zero um, if there's some moderate correlation between the two variables uh, necessarily you will get negative weights being attached to the um, secondary variable because you need some positive weights and some negative weights so that they add up to zero um, so the negative weights they can always potentially lead to problems so um, one methodological uh, suggestion is to use what's called rescaled co-krieging um, and in the is artist Neo framework that means we'll have to officially change the stationarity option to simple Krieging because rescale co Krieging will use the mean values it will need means uh, now we go back to Krieging rescaled co Krieging it'll say simple Krieging but I, I think it's ordinary Krieging um, using uh, the rescaled option so what it does is it rescales the input values so that they're on the same scale puts all of the variables in together and has a total sum of weights equal to one so this, the weights can be attached to either variable I'll not change any of the other options press run RCK instead of OK and we can see that a minimum value uh, in our Krieg estimates is now positive there's not a guarantee that you won't have negative weights there's always a possibility with Krieging that you get negative weights um, but it is uh, like guaranteed that you'll get negative weights with a, a non-trivial co-creaking system uh, or ordinary co-creaking system and in those in those cases it is uh, likely that rescaled co-creaking will improve things always something you would have to test on a case-by-case -case basis but it is an option I'd say most people haven't heard of it uh, there it does have a small handful of uh, very enthusiastic fans and uh, we now have that uh, option uh, you, and you do need to set the um, the geosets uh, stationarity option to simple Cree one final topic this is in the early access menu which is like uh, tasks that are not quite finished they're in beta neighborhood statistics so um, 
if you've saved a neighborhood usually from the Kriegen window or from one of the other interpolation windows let's do iron onto the grid we have various statistics that we're able to calculate within this moving ellipsoid neighborhood so uh, value of the nearest neighbor, value of the furthest neighbor, mean value of the neighbors variance of the neighbors, I don't care about that one minimum, maximum, standard deviation distance to the nearest neighbor, if you want the sample number of the nearest you can have that distance to the furthest etc number of neighbors, if it was multiple passes what's the neighborhood uh, search index and we get a bunch of very uh, simple statistics there's no geo statistics here, it's all just moving averages and moving statistics within that neighborhood um, but this might be used for uh, let's say mean val might be used to uh, help uh, interrogate your Kriegen neighborhoods and that's the tour of Azadis Neo 2022.04. So it's back to mile.